Okay, okay, here we are out here on the pond, idling around, looking for some bass. And I want to show you guys how my personal setup is dialed in. I have two HDS Carbon 12s right here on the dash, but I want to show you sort of how I have them set up, a couple different things about the Lowrance, and how they find bass. So let's dive into it. Right now, I have both of my units on mapping. Um, this is Navionics. Um, I actually just marked a little waypoint right there. I put them a, a little X on them when I haven't seen what they are. A lot of times if I see them on side scan or something. Um, but we're gonna first thing we're going to do is going to go into pages. Um, you know, and, and, and this is something that dialing in your own personal preference is important. Uh, you know, for me, when I have two units to use, I'm going to use my left side, side scan, and map. And when I do this, I just go to the page editor, which is this little red plus sign. Um, go down here in the page editor setup, and I'm just going to select chart, structure. I'm going to go in here, the, pat, the panel layout right here, to the top right. I'm going to select stacked. I want them stacked on top of each other because I want to utilize the whole screen. I'm going to move the structure scan to my bottom and my mapping up top. So now I'm going to press save and it should pop up. Here we are. <clears throat> what this is going to do is now I'm going to have to go into my actual unit on here on the sides, on my side sidebar, go in and select left only. So now I'm utilizing my whole screen on the bottom to my left and I'm going to do the exact same thing on my right side. So I got a hundred, you know, I got 12 inches of screen rather than just utilizing one unit for your structure scan and your side scan, you're utilizing your whole 24 inch screen system. So that's, that's really important. And that allows you to see a couple different things. You see fish a little bit better. You see lay downs a little bit better brush. Um, and it's definitely a big ordeal. We're on the mapping page, select pages, go over here to the page editor, which is in the bottom right of your screen. Um, hit this little button right here. I'm going to go in and put sonar, hit structure, I'm going to put structure. And you're going to have to go in and basically select your layout. So my personal favorite layout for this setup and for my own personal setup is structure scan, structure scan, 2D. Um, so my structure scan, side scan, I'm going to put him on the bottom. So I'm going to utilize the whole screen like we were talking about, down scan and 2D. So now I'll hit save. You've got to go into your view, select right only. Don't select left only, and then this one select right only. You're gonna be all mixed up. You don't even know what's gonna go on. So make sure you select right only, Roger, and then you're good to go. So you have your 100 foot on your right, 100 foot on your left. It should be solid. Contrast is probably the biggest feature in a Lawrence side scan, down scan, sucker scan transducer in this unit that you can use to to really modify what you person your personal preference. So this is actually a pretty good little contrast. They've actually had plus three, sixty-two percent. Um, and and if you have it, you know, if it goes down to fifty-two or something like that, you know, you're going to have a lot less contrast. You're not going to see things as well. You see that you can't see that stick. There's actually a little lay down right there. You know, but if I bump it up, it's going to be brighter. You're going to be able to see the contrast, see the shadows a lot better. So, you know, for me, personal preference, 60%-ish, somewhere around there. I don't normally go the 70 because it starts blowing things out a little bit too much on side scan. Um, but, you know, on this setup, 63%, 64%, it's about perfect. Down scan's a little bit different. For me, I personally like going in my down scan, and I have it pretty high. If you put an auto contrast, you'll see that a lot of these fish is some bait. These are some probably crappie right here, um, some some crappie up underneath the bait. That might even be a couple of bass up in in the bait itself. But you'll see that it's 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 not very. Ooh, that, that's definitely a bass sitting in there. That's, and basically, what it is is you'll see that they're not real defined. A little bit definition right here, but for me, I really like to have those fish when they when they come up on the screen stand out. Go back into menu. Go in here and hit auto contrast, turn on auto contrast off. I'm gonna bump him up to about 65. And you'll see things start to become a lot more defined. You'll see that that, that these these that, that big predator fish jumps out at you. And you know, I can see these fish, I can see the bait, see how the bait right here this is a smaller bait, it's a little bit larger bait. It's probably like it's probably crappie right here. You know, it's just a totally different deal. And and that's 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 what I, I like. I like to be able to see and see the definition of what I'm looking at. And editing the contrast allows you to do that. Okay, here's a good example of some some brush. You know, here you get multiple brush piles. I'm at a couple predator fish. Probably these are some bass right here. See them in turn during 10 to 12. 
right inside of a lot of that bait. Then you have maybe like one smaller one right there and a couple other ones. So Basically. you can see some fish out here in 26 even, pretty deep. But you know, we're idling. Oh, there's a big brush pile. Big brush pile. Crappie on it. Those could actually be some bass. Idling around. You see a couple of them, they're pretty small down there. You got some right there. I'm gonna mark that. I put a lot of waypoints on my screen most of the time when I'm trying to really analyze what a place is. Put a couple of fish right there, mark that with the brush pile. This allows me to really get dialed in here. And let's see if we can catch one there. Stand by, take this off. Let's see if we can catch one of these suckers. Just dropping a little drop shot down in the middle of the, the brush. This is brush on 2D, real defined. Not what I was looking for, I was looking to try to... Yeah, right here we got a drop shot, 3 8 ounce. Uh, VMC cylinder weight, little robo worm right here. New VMC hook, it's coming out this year. It's pretty legit. Some fish right there. Could, they look pretty small though. Looking for more of a defined dot. Sometimes I like to get off a little ways and just drag it behind the boat. Let the wind sort of carry me. Sometimes it's better to drag it a little bit. Sure. A lot of times they're looking at it. From what I've seen, you see the, the pressure there's some right there actually up high by spots. I might have spooked that sucker. Maybe might go catch him. Like that. Maybe we'll see. See how fast he goes down there and gets it. You might be pitching this drop shot around on the hump or a point. You know, like we just pitch out there and all of a sudden, boom, you see one, you reel your stuff up, you drop down there. Uh, you know, and try to catch those fish, individual fish. So for me, it's one of my favorite ways to fish, looking at those fish and actually seeing them on the bottom and dropping to them or seeing them suspended and getting those fish to react and bite. So there's my weight, there's my bait, and there was the fish that was falling. Getting on top of them with your train, with your boat sometimes can really mess those fish up. So you could even have a better time actually just dropping to or pitching to them or casting to them. When you're dropping down on those fish, your, your, your bait sits horizontal because you're over the top of that bait. And it's the most natural looking deal and presentation to really make that bait act right. Problem is, you got your, your unit right over top and then you hear that click, 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 click. You know, you have that constant clicking sound and those fish have started to come, become accustomed to hearing that and know, hey, look, you know, hey, it's it, it's this time of day. They're, you know, that's, that's, that's a boat trying to catch me. So I think that, that they get freaked out by it sometimes, and sometimes you're better off just pitching to them. Always trying to pay attention to that string. And sometimes you only have a split second. My bait doesn't get down there fast enough. I'm trying to watch my bait fall. Might have clipped him, maybe. Yeah, he went down to it. You see how that fish sort of came down to it. There he is. Might be a big one. Oh, big. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta pack off of them. That fish right there, you know, we're fishing out here. 20 foot of water. Nice. Awesome. Look at this thing. Oh, that's awesome. What about nice post water? Come here, Rudy. Just like that. <laughs> that's awesome. Just exactly what we were talking about. You know, if you can't get them to bite vertical, back off them and cast to them. That's really going to allow you to get a few more bites. You know, with this day and age, <laughs> you have all these new electronics. Staying off them sometimes can really get those fish. And you look at that little VMC hook right here. Look at this thing. I'd say it works just fine. Oh, he was not coming off. Awesome. Beautiful postmon bass. Hey, doesn't get much better than that. There he is. Hey, they're being goofy. If you scroll back, that's the fish right there. You see my bait that's solid, that little bit like lighter red line. That was my bait, and he was messing around with it, looking at it, looking at it. Buddy, we got him though. About a 14 incher. Let him go. 
from there. All right, guys, that's about it. Had a lot of fun. Hopefully you learned a few things getting out here offshore, using that electronics, using you know that fairy wand, catching a few bass, caught it a couple of nice fish. And uh, you know, the biggest thing you need to take from this more than anything, I would say, is paying attention to your electronics. You know, we marked a few fish a little bit further away and, and did catch that nice largemouth in, in that area. But you know, we found a group of spots that were off the side of the point up here a little shallower than we marked them. So paying attention to what's going on, even when you know you might have an idea of what's going on over there, there might be a few fish right up underneath your boat. We'll see y'all next time.